Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial and today I saw on the last video the polygon and graphing data using Plotly that I received a comment asking about how we could do this looping through multiple stocks, how we could essentially pull in an Excel file and use that. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the terminal here and a couple of things we're going to need as far as the libraries we're going to use is pandas and open pixel so these are the two mains ones you probably have pandas if you tr uh, followed the last tutorial if you don't pip install pandas and same thing with the other one pip install open pixel or open like that i already have these requirements installed as you can see if i do pip freeze oh i would have to scroll through them but there's pandas and Pandas and open pixels. I saw it somewhere. So I'll clear my terminal and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is have a Excel file for this example. The test file I have looks like this, where we have the stock, the start date, and the end date. So we have these three columns. How do we get them into Python? Well, a cool thing about pandas is that we can use pandas directly. Pandas has a function called read Excel. So after we connect to our client, we can say use pandas to read Excel sheet. And we can say Excel file, we can name it that pd.read. And notice I'm using pd because we imported it as pd, so we don't have to write pandas every time. Read Excel. And in this, all we need is the file name. So test file.xlsx. I can just say this because it's in the same root path as these. If it was in another folder, uh, you would have to write your slash like folder, so on and so forth. Now that we have this Excel file, let's just see what's in it and if it grabbed the data correctly and how it prints. You notice how we get the rows the columns and the data. So one thing you'll notice is, well, what if we're not going to want the 0, 1, 2. How do we get rid of that? Well, pretty easy. So first thing is, let's talk about how we get the stocks, the start date, and the end date, and that will lead into getting rid of the 0, 1, and 2. So after we import the Excel file, we basically first want to check, does our program know how long this Excel file is? So I'm just going to go ahead, throw another parentheses around Excel file, type length in front of it, or len, and say that it says three. So we know it's getting the three rows that we need. Because of that, I'm going to say for i in range, the length of our Excel file. Now we're going to append the values. What are we going to append them to? Let's make some, more, let's make some lists. So stocks are just stock list. We can make that an empty array. Start date, we can make that an empty array. And end date, we can make that an empty array. Now that we initialize these variables, we can append. So stock list dot append. And to grab the stock list from here, because it's being treated as a data frame, we can simply say Excel file stock because I labeled this column stock dot I lock or I, I just pronounce it I lock and I so this is the part that helps us traverse the rows this is the part where we're saying hey we're on the zeroth time going through this or our first time but our zeroth in the zero, what what stock is in the zeroth row? If we were to get rid of this, we would be given zero, something that looks like zero, and the apple. But because we are just talking about what is in the zeroth row, we're just going to get apple. Now we can do this with all of them. Start date, dot append, and again Excel file start date dot i luck i 
And lastly, we can do the same with the end date. End date dot append Excel file and end date I lock I to make sure we got all this correct. We can use some print statements just to check our sanity. Start date print end date. Oh, my apologies. So now you can see when we printed the stocks, they got Apple, Nvidia, and Intel. We got the timestamps for our start date and the timestamps for our end date. Now you can start seeing where we can start applying this into our code from last time. So we're going to take all our code from last time and we're going to say for i in range of our stock list, of the length of our stock list, we're going to want to loop through and get all this data for each of these stocks. So I'm going to tab this over once and instead of hard coding Apple, I'm simply going to say we're in what element of the stock list here we can say we're in what the, whatever element of the start date and whatever element of the end date and get rid of that we'll be good so start date, end date, stock lists are now all within lists in our Python. And we can grab them all from the Excel file, loop through, grab the aggregate bar data, and separate out the close, the high, the low. I know this applies more on the daily time frame, even though I have minute hard coded in here. Uh, I just have minute hard coded in here because someone requested I showed for the uh, one minute time frames. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, I can actually, actually keep these and I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can now save this to an Excel sheet. Just to prove that our code works, the first thing we want to do is just run it and see, hey, are we getting all the close lists for all the stocks? So I can quickly say close lists or print close lists. And we can look here. And yep, those are a lot of minutes in, in the time frame that I set. I don't think I'm going to be able to mouse through all of this, but I trust you could see that it works. To save this data into one of our Excel sheets, we can now sit, utilize the OpenPixel workbook that we had up here. We're going to say book equals workbook making it equal to that class. We'll say sheet is equal to book.active. And then in our new sheet, we can say in that A1 column, let's just say, we want to set that to the, the most recent close list price that we got. Then all we'll have to do is book.save. And we can say sample dot xlsx. If we go ahead and run this, You'll notice that everything got saved into this. And if I go ahead and reveal this in File Explorer, open this, look, the 45855. Now, obviously, you might be wanting to store more data or in more specific parts of your Excel sheet. But I assume that with this knowledge and with the looping knowledge that you will be able to expand and fully customize your Polygon and Excel application.